Hi everyone, Harris here with the iDownload blog. After a handful of beta releases as well as the release of iOS 14.4.1, we now have iOS 14.5 which should be available for you to download on your devices, any device that supported iOS 14. With it brings a bunch of new features, some pretty big and some smaller, but let's jump right into the top features. So starting out with number one is Apple Watch related. And I made a video about this, which you can check out if you wanna see more details. But basically you can now use your Apple Watch to unlock your iPhone while you are wearing a mask. So this allows you to bypass your lock screen if your Apple Watch is connected to you, close enough to you, and has password protection on the watch itself, you can now bypass the lock screen on your iPhone if you want to, to get into your phone more quickly. So that's a great feature and I invite you to check out that video if you're curious about more details. Next are some nice additions to the Maps app. So this includes adding ways like reports when you're getting directions. So if I'm trying to go to Fenway Park, and I click go, I can actually report accidents, hazards, and speed checks, which is awesome. Now, if you click these, you can't undo it, at least not at this point, so don't accidentally click it. But this will be an awesome mechanism for keeping your driving more efficient and, and safer and more. So this will be really great to see on Apple's Maps because I know a lot of people use this on Waze. Additionally, you now have this new add stop option, which is awesome. So if you want to do multiple uh, locations or add a destination, uh, this allows you to do that a lot more easily than before. Next in music, there are a few differences here. So now the menu option is to the right, and when you click this, it opens up this menu option a lot quicker than before. So you just tap that, it opens it up, and you can also see the download button right next to that, so that little download icon now lives there. But additionally, there are new swipe options. So if you swipe to the right, you can add this to the beginning or the end of your music queue, so this brings in Spotify-like navigation. And if you pull all the way to the side, it'll put it on top. Or if you just do it like this, you can do playing last. Then if you drag from the other side, you can delete it from your downloads and your library. And then if this was already deleted, I could swipe to the right to add it to my library. You also now have the ability to send lyrics. So any song that supports the, the lyric view, you can now share a lyric. So if I do share lyrics right here in the menu, you can see that this one actually does not support the time synced lyrics, so it can't. But if I go to a different song, share lyrics, you can see I can drag through and choose what lyric I want to share. And then I can click share. And now under the library view, there's also now a made for you tab, which is going to have your friends mix and your get up mix and any other albums that have been made for you curated by Apple Music. So this is pretty cool. And I like this tab because I do like the friends mix and the get up mix. So normally this would be under the listen now, but it is missing the new music mix, the chill mix and the favorites mix, but it does have get up and friends. And hopefully they add the other ones to this view. Just makes it quicker to get there. Now, if you hop over to the podcast app, we have some similar changes. So for one, there is a new interface. When you click on a podcast, you can see that the screen does look a little bit different than it was before and it looks nice. And then here you also get the new gestures that we see in music. So sliding here, it's going to mark it as red or unread. And swiping to the right, we'll delete it, or we have this bookmark view. And then if we go back into here, we can see the saved tab. And this will show any uh, podcast that we have saved in here for listening to later. And this is awesome. Uh, we didn't have the saved tab show up here in the library view before. So now any podcast you want to just listen to later, you can get to from this view. And finally, we also have new emoji, which is awesome. There's a few new ones here, and there's a few more than this as well. These are some of the new emoji that you can expect on your phone, including the heart on fire and the syringe and the headphones becoming the AirPods Max and more. Now there's also a brand new tab in the Find My app called Items. And here you can add items or identify found items. So you can see if you find someone else's device, you can do identify found items. You can try to figure out who owns it, but then you can also add items and this will search for items that are compatible with this. And this also works with new beats such as the Power Beats and the Beats Flex that have the H1 or W1 chips. So you now have those within the Find My app. So this is really awesome and is 
part of the process of expanding the Find My app on the iPhone and iPad. And now that Apple's actually released the AirTags, we know that this items menu is for Apple AirTag. So if you're tracking any devices or, or anything with an AirTag, you can find that in the Find My app on your iPhone, which is great and something that Apple is definitely going to be continuing developing with these new accessories. Now on the iPhone 12 models, you can get dual SIM 5G support. So those who use the iPhone's dual SIM functionality will be happy to hear that 14.5 finally brings global support for 5G in dual SIM mode on the iPhone 12 model, so that's a nice update. You now are able to set a preferred, not default, but a preferred music streaming service. So when you tell Siri to play music, it will automatically go to Spotify or podcast or Apple Music or whatever you want, depending on what you select. And that's great. And the first time that you ask to play music with Siri, you should get the prompt to set which one you want to set as the preferred. Now another change can be found under the Siri options and we have some new voices here. So now the voices are not gendered but rather just labeled. So if you go into Siri voices you have your American through South African voices but now you have voice one through four and you can click on them and they will download and give you a sample of what they sound like. In particular voice two and three are new so if you're looking for a different voice for Siri on your phone you're going you're going to be able to do that with iOS 14.5. If you have an iPhone 11 series phone and you go into battery and battery health, you're going to be able to see some battery calibration settings, which will help to maximize your battery on your iPhone. So again, this is limited to the iPhone 11 series of phones. So you can go in there and see if this is something you need to do, but if you don't have those phones, it won't even be an option to begin with. Now there's other new features such as Apple AirPlay 2 for Fitness Plus. So if you're a Fitness Plus user on the iPhone, this will be great with your Apple Watch. You can now use AirPlay 2 for sending it to multiple devices around your room or multiple home pods and more. Now there's also expanded controller support. So if you have a PS5 DualSense controller or the Xbox Series X controllers, you're going to be able to use those with your iPhone, which is awesome. Now the Apple Card has brought family support. So multiple people on your iCloud family plan will be able to use your Apple Card going forward. At the time of recording this, this wasn't live yet, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, this is available and you get the 3% cash back for multiple people in your family. Now when you're using accessories such as the MagSafe wallet, there is a more prominent haptic click and sound when you do that, which is great. So we can hear what that sounds like. So it is quite satisfying when you put your MagSafe wallet on your device. Now there's a new privacy feature, so developers need to ask for and receive a user's permission if they want to access your random advertising identifier. So you've been seeing these permissions pop up on iOS 14 already, but this is a new one. If they want your random advertising identifier, they're going to have to ask for that. And you can find this under privacy and tracking. And here you can see what apps want to have access to this. And this basically is used to track your activity across apps and websites. There's now the option to use Call Siri emergency. for emergencies. So you can tell Siri to help you out in an emergency and make an emergency phone call, which is new and helpful. Now in reminders, you are able to sort by due date, creation date, priority, and title which is new, we didn't have all these options before. And you also are able to now print your list. So if you wanna print your grocery list, you can go ahead and print that out. In the news app, there is now a tab designated just for searching, and it is functionally identical as before, but now there's just a dedicated search tab down in the bottom right hand corner. If you go into your notification settings, you can now turn emergency alerts off and turn off always deliver so that when your phone is on silent mode it will not light up your phone with a really loud sound in case you're in a really important meeting or church or whatever and you don't want the alert to go off then and then there are some new safety settings within the find my app under me so going forward this will make sure that somebody doesn't put a location tracking device on you and this will be able to recognize if there are. So if someone puts on a tracking device on you and this recognizes that it's getting GPS data and that it isn't connected to your phone, such as the future Apple tags, this is going to be able to alert you. So those are some of the changes to iOS 14.5. Let me know your thoughts and if you really like any of these features or if you find any others. 
hope you enjoyed the download and the video. Thanks for watching.